My name is Mesut Oshina. I am neurologist at the Danish Headache Center. Today I'm here to present you our new study on investigation of the blood-brain barrier in patients with migraine with aura. Why it's interesting to study the blood-brain barrier in migraine with aura? Many neurological diseases are associated with the changes in the permeability of the blood-brain barrier. It has been suggested that in migraine patients, during the attacks, there is a disruption of the blood-brain barrier, which allows the chemicals to enter the brain, activate the sensitive, pain-sensitive nerve fibers, and generate migraine pain. This has not been possible to study in humans until recently. Now we have a method which allows us to study that, and my research team at the Danish Headache Center set up the study to investigate this aspect of migraine pathophysiology. So we specifically studied a group of uh, migraine patients with aura. The migraine aura is characterized by gradually developing transient neurological symptoms, most often in the form of visual disturbances. And these migraine aura symptoms are then followed by headache. And the relation between migraine aura and the subsequent head pain is unknown. It's a mystery. Migraine aura is most likely caused by a wave of spreading depolarization that spreads slowly across the cerebral cortex. This is known as cortical spreading depression. And animal studies have suggested that cortical spreading depression tragically disrupts the blood-brain barrier, which then subsequently leads to activation of pain-sensitive neurons that would cause head pain, we suppose. But this hypothesis uh, has never before been tested in human patients. So, in order to investigate this, we applied an advanced MRI method that was developed here at our institution by Professor Henrik Glass. We use a dynamic contrast enhanced imaging in order to measure subtle changes of the blood brain barrier permeability. This is a technique based on injection of a common MR contrast agent. And from this single bolus injection, we can estimate both permeability using the padlock approach, and we can also estimate the cerebral uh, blood flow using a data-driven approach, which is mainly based on the Tiguanox regularization. And uh, using this method, uh, we, can, we now think we can estimate quite small uh, changes of the blood brain barrier permeability. So even with these state-of-the-art methods, it's highly logistically challenging to scan migraine patients during migraine attacks. When these patients suffer from severe headache, photo and phonophobia, nausea and maybe even vomiting. But we managed to scan 19 patients during spontaneous attacks of migraine with aura. And what this, did these uh, scans show? Well, we found that the blood-brain barrier remains intact during these attacks of migraine with aura. So our results do not support the hypothesis of blood-brain barrier leakage during migraine attacks. Interestingly, we also found that the perfusion of the brainstem increases during these attacks. So activation of brainstem neurons may be a link between migraine aura, cortical spring depression, and the subsequent headache. So, Mesut, what do you think is uh, the clinical significance of these findings? Well, this is a very relevant question, Anas. I think that our data opposes the previously suggested and poorly supported hypothesis on the blood-brain barrier leakage in migraine with aura. This data also questions whether the current or the future anti-migraine drugs exert their mode of action in the brain.